All right. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jen Lampton. Um, I am a web developer. I'm working with Drupal for 13 plus years, maybe. Um, I run a very small company called Generation Web Development out of California, and I do a lot of work on local government websites, particularly for the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, which is the site I'm going to be showing you guys today. Um, this organization uh, uses Granicus for their meetings, and I'm assuming most of you probably know what Granicus is already, uh, or you wouldn't be in this session, but just for a really high overview, they provide this fantastic service that helps government organizations make all of the content of their meetings available to the public. And so that means that before the meeting, uh, my agency is able to publish um, agendas and materials for that meeting online. And then when the meeting starts, uh, there is a video recording that starts. When the meeting ends, the video recording is published on the website along with minutes uh, and other information from um, uh, that meeting. So if you have uh, a requirement that all of your information be made public, Granicus is a really great uh, solution to that problem. One of my favorite things about Granicus that I think is uh, invaluable is that they also usually have timestamps for that meeting recording that match to exact points in the agenda. So people can read the agenda later, click on a link in the agenda and go to that exact part of the meeting to watch what happened in the meeting. So Granicus provides this really great service. A lot of government organizations use it. I think it's the only uh, tool in the market. Um, and uh, it's something that they get a lot of value out of, but uh, one of the things that's really hard for web developers to work with is that their APIs are clunky, not very well documented, um, questionably maintained. We've had a bunch of issues with stuff recently where you uh, open a ticket with them and they say someone's working on it and months go by and you can't actually figure out if anyone's working on it or not. Uh, so what we decided to do for this particular um, project was make sure that all of the changes that they need to be able to make to their meetings could be made on the Drupal side in case we did have any problems um, getting any changes made on the Granicus side or if we needed to do something faster than they were able to produce it. Um, I'm just going to take a minute and uh, quit some applications that are making a bunch of noise on my computer. So apologies in advance. Okay. So uh, before I dive into the integration between Drupal and Granicus, I want to do a quick show and tell of uh, one of the websites. This is the MTC's primary website, and this is uh, in particular the meeting section of that website. Um, the requirement here was that they had to show all of the upcoming meetings for this organization and its related organizations in one place. Um, so there's a really long list of uh, all future meetings, but you also had to be able to browse for meetings that happened in the past. So if you wanted to be able to get um, agendas or watch videos for past meetings, those also had to be here. Um, because they have so many different kinds of meetings, they had requirements that you'd be able to like search for which particular group it is, you had to be able to um, search for a particular time span. So we built a lot of integration with um, the Drupal system by having a content type for meeting that had a whole ton of fields on it. And all those fields are pulling in information that was entered into the Granicus system. And then when it gets loaded into the Drupal site, we have the ability to build these listing using views and exposed filters and all the normal kinds of things you would do um, with data had it been just entered directly into Drupal. And what this does by using all of the normal dripping, Drupal building blocks is allow you to manage your meetings in the same way that you would any other content on your site. Um, so this, for example, looks like a very simple meeting. Um, what it's got here is uh, just a title, a date, and then uh, contact information. But if I'm to edit this particular meeting, um, this is you know, just your normal Drupal backend edit form. You can see all of the options that are available here. So we have uh, the normal node title, a meeting name. So this is, um, they have a very specific way meetings need to be named. And so having a field here with predefined options would make it so that you couldn't accidentally name a meeting with a typo or misspelling or just, I don't know, different order of words. Um, some of the meetings they have are closed sessions and not available for public to attend, but they still need to publish information about the 
closed sessions on their website. So we have a little check mark here so they can mark a meeting as being closed. Um, if the meeting isn't going to have a live uh, way to attend or view the meeting, then we turn off the microphone. So based on what they know about that meeting ahead of time, we have a little microphone icon that indicates that you can attend a meeting. If you can't attend the meeting, we hide the microphone. There's of course the date and time for a meeting, administrative contact information. Um, if a meeting is canceled, they also still wanted to have it displayed on the website. Um, so there's an option here that lets you say a meeting is canceled and then they'll get like a line through it and say canceled. Um, if the meeting has a defined location, then we can put in address information in a conference room. And uh, thanks to uh, COVID-19, we did a very quick adaptation this year, which made all of the meetings that had previously been entered with uh, meeting locations, strip off the locations and add uh, online attendee information instead. So we added a new attendee link field. So if they're meeting on Zoom, they can put in a Zoom link. Um, instead of a physical location where people can go. And then there's a whole bunch of documents that are usually associated with a meeting too. And these documents had to be pulled from, um, Granicus has a separate API specifically for uh, documents and images and stuff. And so these are pulled from a separate API and information about the meeting. We can talk a little bit about that later. Um, but this organization has a lot of different ways documents can be provided for meetings and the, there are specific names for the way all those documents are managed. And so they have one file that could be both the agenda and the minutes, one that's just an agenda. Sometimes the agenda is posted online instead of uploaded as a document. So you might wanna have a link to it. There's a meeting packet, which could be a whole bunch of information that's handed out at the meeting. Um, we could have a meeting, meeting handout. <laughs> I don't know technically what the differences between those are. I'm not super involved in um, their internal uh, naming of things, but I know that they're different. Uh, and then if you have other things that don't fit in to any of the existing categories, uh, there's a other documents section. Meeting minutes, though, is the one that's by far the most common. Almost every um, meeting uh, has minutes posted before it or after it so that people can go and refer to what happened in the meeting. Uh, there's also a recording URL, and this is interesting because um, it's never populated before the meeting happens. This is something that is added after the meeting is concluded. So we can't just pull this information in once when the meeting is scheduled. We have to constantly be checking for updates. And after the meeting's done, we have to pull in the information again with any updates to it. And there's a couple of fields here that are uh, unique to Granicus that I wanted to record on the Drupal side so that if we need to do any checking, like if for some reason the importer gets out of sync, we have a way to validate a particular meeting that we have on our site matches a particular meeting that they have on their end. And that way we can um, tell if uh, we need to synchronize something after the fact. And I added this additional field for update trigger uh, it's not necessary, but it was something that I used for a while when we were having problems getting the uh, meetings to update. I would be able to put something in on the Drupal side when the original import was coming in and then recalculate the same thing again later and compare um, those hashes to see what had changed. So it's not something that's used now, but it was useful for one point in time for making, like for example, someone posts a new meeting agenda previous meeting agenda might have not been any different in terms of file size, in terms of file name. So trying to figure out how to get this Drupal node to realize that it needs to update based on the new information in the Granicus feed could be really hard. Uh, all right, so that is the anatomy of a meeting. Um, the pages on the site, uh, the meeting page itself, really straightforward. If we'd had a meeting with a physical location, there would also be a map here and instructions on how to get there. Um, the meetings landing page you guys already saw it has a lot of search ability for how to get meetings you, different, you, you might want. And then there's a bunch of subsections that also pull meetings. This is also just normal Drupal view stuff where you can have a list of meetings um, in a sidebar on a different page. Here's the microphone I was talking about earlier. Um, here's a meeting with a location. Let's see if there's a map. Yep, there's a map. Tells you how to get there. Um, and then we have meetings on the home page in another format. Uh, that'll allow people to tell directly from the home page if there's an upcoming meeting they want to know something about. So um, from the Granicus side, they have a bunch of APIs. On the Drupal side, we have a bunch of tools that we can use to pull in um, information from different sources. 
I couldn't find a tool that already existed within Drupal that worked with the APIs that Granicus already provided, but we did uh, find the Drupal module feeds that can be adapted to work with almost any feed. Uh, the API from Granicus does not produce feeds necessarily in the sense that you need to pull in information. So what we ended up doing was hiring a Java developer to work with the Granicus APIs to generate a feed that the Drupal site could use to pull in information. So it's a little sort of a three-step process. We go and get all the information about the meetings from the Granicus API. We then take all of that information and go and get all of the documents associated with each meeting from the Granicus document API. And then we have a feed that we can use for, for the Drupal site to ingest. And this um, organization also has a requirement that these meetings need to always be up to date. And so on the Drupal side, we're checking that feed every 15 minutes to see if there's any new content or anything that's changed since the last time we've pulled it in. That means the JavaScript that's running and hitting these other APIs from Granicus also needs to be running every 15 minutes to make sure that we're getting all of the information on time um, uh, delivered to the website. So at most, there's usually a delay of half an hour between a change happening, someone entering it into Granicus, and it showing up on the website. So from the feed side, I have, uh, let's see, I have the module turned off, of course. Um, so feeds is a module in Drupal that uh, has a bunch of different parts that you can string together. Um, so feeds is the base module that just allows you to pull in content. And then there's a bunch of little plugins that you can get to work with feeds. So you can see from this list of modules that we've got a lot of different stuff going on. Um, there's a feeds extensible parser module. There's a feeds uh, add-on that allows you to attach different headers. Um, there's a feeds tamper tool. And I use this really heavily. This allows you to take data from one source and transform it into a different kind of data. So um, a lot of the fields on the Granicus side are just empty text fields. So like an address is entered into a text area or um, a date is just typed in. And on the Drupal side, there's a bunch of typed data. So an address needs to be split into you know, a, a city, a zip code, a state, a street, uh, building information, and the date needs to be turned into a Unix timestamp. And so having the ability to take the data from the Granicus source and translate it into uh, the format that Drupal expects to receive it in is also uh, really important. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, user interfaces. This is the admin UI module in the feeds admin UI module so you can um, see how these work. This site does have um, a handful of custom code. I'm not sure if you saw that module there. There's a module here called MTC feeds. Um, and most of the custom code on the site, I can go through a little later if, if you're more uh, curious about it, but it contains exports of configurations that had already been set up. So this is you know, an alternative to using something like um, features module and it can include specific um, tampers. So the ability to translate from one format to another. Um, uh, there were a bunch of specific cases that weren't covered by standard tampers. And so we wrote custom ones to handle things like addresses. Okay, so let's go to the feeds importer section. And this site runs a couple of them, but the meetings is the most exciting one. So um, we are going to override our meetings importer. Um, so the way that this uh, feeds importer works is that we have a standalone form on the site and that was really important because we wanted um, our administrators to be able to rerun the importer if they had to. So I'm just going to go uh, show you what that looks like really quick. Um, this is a, the form that will run the import. It has a URL where it's going to re retrieve all of the events and when you hit the import button it will start pulling in meeting events from the external source and adding them to the Drupal site. If they already exist on the Drupal site, they will check to see if they need to be updated. And if they do, it will update the information that's already stored um, in the meeting on the site. And we had a couple of instances where something needed to be updated immediately. So we can't wait that half an hour for it to get pulled in normally from the importer. And having an interface like this where an administrator can log into the site and hit import is really helpful. Um, so uh, let's see. 
this particular importer pulls a meeting from an external source. Um, it uses uh, XML format, which so our, our feed was generated in, and created in XML. And that was, I don't you know, we could have chosen any other format since we were creating the feed ourselves, but that's what we landed on. Um, the parser is what figures out how to map specific parts of the XML feed to specific fields on the Drupal side. And so here we have um, all of the fields in the XML field are here on the right and all of the Drupal stuff is on the left. And so if you go to mapping down here at the bottom, you can see how like the um, uh, ID maps to the meeting ID. This was the uh, stuff specifically for Granicus. Uh, unique ID is a, another Granicus identifier. And then all of the stuff that we need to manage in Drupal, like the title and the um, uh, agenda and the location, all of the stuff is fill, filled in one field at a time. Um, the, a lot of this stuff is pulled from one source on the Granicus side and copied into multiple sources on the Drupal side. Uh, and we have a lot of mappings as to how you can uh, do stuff like that through the tamper system. So if I just go and look at the tamper system, um, you can see, for example, uh, the meeting name can sometimes have a date in it and we don't want the date showing up on our website. So uh, in this case, we remove the date from the name. We have uh, another one, this is an example where we converted the date where in Drupal, we need it to be in a Unix timestamp. It came in as a string, so we have a tool here that will allow us to convert the string to a timestamp. I think we even used the date that we pulled off of the meeting name <laughs> as the date for here, because they didn't have a specific date field for handling that on the feed for some, for some reason. Um, we have uh, a bunch of stuff going on in the location because that was a giant text area. So to try and figure out how to translate the text area into a normal uh, address field, we also ended up copying the entire contents of that text area into a text area in Drupal 2 so that if we had any problems with the mapping of the address, we'd be able to tell uh, what the problem was in, either in how the address was formatted or in how our parser was trying to read it. Uh, file feature. This is a little tricky uh, because there isn't a very clean way to download a file from an external source and save it on your Drupal site. Uh, we ended up finding a uh, sandbox module that handled file downloads and we were able to adapt it a little bit to work specifically for this purpose. We found that there were some problems with the media manager from Granicus where sometimes you'd request a document and return a 404 error. And that was really hard on uh, the Drupal site because it would look at that and go, oh, hold on, this document's changed, let me go grab it. And then it would grab a copy of the 404 response. Uh, and so we had to build in some special protections to make sure that you know that was a valid response before we updated the file on the Drupal side. Um, so there's a couple of just customized customizations in there specifically based on the way that our source of the documents were beha was behaving. Um, there's a couple of other things like pulling the uh, video URL in. Uh, there are a couple of different ways to do that. What we ended up doing was pulling a unique ID from the Granicus side and then constructing the URL out of that unique ID because there wasn't a URL that we could grab directly from their end, but we could, we could build one. Um, so there's a little customization in how, how to handle the uh, URL creation on our end too. Uh, and then we have, um, uh, you know, we're not using this update trigger anywhere. I mentioned that was a problem before, but there's some other stuff in there. Uh, finding and replacing, we had uh, for email addresses, this organization went through a uh, domain name change recently where uh, a bunch of different organizations merged into one. And so we had a bunch of email addresses change. And so we wanted to make sure that if any of the email addresses had been entered into Granicus before the change, when they got pulled into the Drupal site, they got translated into the new correct version of the email address afterwards. So some stuff like that. Um, so that's a lot of technical stuff about how to set things up on the Drupal side. Um, I wanna go ahead and run an import so we can see how that goes. Fingers crossed, my computer doesn't crash. Um, this feed is about, I think, 600 items right now. And so the process of running an import can take up to three minutes. 
Um, we found for some reason on Aquia's east servers, it, it took hardly any time at all. On Aquia's west servers, it takes a lot more time, which is very strange because all the websites on the west coast and the documents are on the west coast, but there's some routing issue that's making it take a lot longer. Um, so we're going to let this go and look at some other stuff while it's importing. There's a lot of stuff going on. So this meeting importer was something that we set up for their uh, primary website. And then as we started making other websites for this organization, it, we found that other parts of the organization also needed to use Granicus for the same reasons. And so we adapted this to work on several other websites. Um, this is uh, an organization that recently has combined with the MTC and it has the same, um, same meeting handling with importing from Granicus, but a much simpler display. It also has a lot fewer meetings than you, you'll see on the main MTC site. Uh, we have another website, again, same thing, hardly any meetings compared to the primary site, but using the same importer. And a uh, third site we have here, uh, slightly more meetings than the last one, um, uh, but this also integrates um, uh, different type of content. So instead of just pulling in meetings, it also pulls in uh, events and webinars. So the great thing about using feeds as a solution is that once we already had the feed created by pulling all the information we needed from Granicus, we could use the same modules on all of these sites to pull all the content in. So we have one module that defines uh, the importer itself. And we have one module that contains um, uh, all of the information you need to know about the meeting itself. And then we have a module that contains all of the customizations for the data that needs to be translated. And so as long as our information from the type of meeting, so every one of these sites might have different requirements per fields on meetings. So as long as the information that's in the module that defines the meeting maps matches the information in the mapping, you can take the same sort of suite of things and put them on any given site and still pull in meetings information in the same way. So I feel like I've been talking straight for 20 minutes or so. And uh, I would love to know if anyone has any questions specifically about how we did this or um, what we're planning on doing when we move these sites to Drupal 8, which is what we're working on right now, or Drupal 9 in some cases, um, or anything that I haven't covered that you're curious about. I can't see the Slack channel because I quit that because it was making noises. Um, but if anyone wants to see, uh, post anything in the Zoom group chat, that's a great place to do it. Um, because all of this work that I've done with the meeting importer is very custom to this particular site and their use of Granicus, I haven't found a good way to extrapolate it into something that I thought make, might make a good contributed module for Drupal. But it is something that I have had on my mind for a while. Um, the fact that we're using a bunch of Drupal contributed modules already and kind of sort of clicking them together in a specific way is really handy. Um, and then the only parts that are really custom are the creation of the content type for meetings and the mapping of how we get the information out of the Granicus feed into the Drupal site. Um, the hardest part by far was working with the Granicus API. And I have that experience <laughs> working with any API. Um, uh, it's, it's also, uh, you know, not Drupal, which is my expertise. So when you're working with something else and it, you're running into all the same problems, like Drupal's not, well, it's arguable how well Drupal's documented. Some people say it's way too well documented, but sometimes it's hard to work through the Drupal documentation to figure out how it works. It's the same way when you're learning something new, like learning with the Granicus API, how to figure out how to get the information you need out of it. There was a lot of trial and error in that part. Um, there's one question in the Zoom group chat that says, will you need to rehire a Java developer to revise the connector code for Drupal 8 and 9? The answer to that is no, because um, the Drupal developer, or sorry, the Java developer that we hired for the first one, she made us a feed uh, that we use to import all of the data. And because the Granicus information isn't changing and the information in that feed isn't going to change, the only thing we need to worry about is how we ingest the information from that feed. So all of the stuff that we've already done in terms of exposing that information to a place where our site can pull it in does not need to be touched at all for Drupal 8 and 9. All we need to do is figure out how to get our website onto Drupal 8 and 9 and then how to get the information from the feed into the website. Um, 
And uh, we have decided to go a very different route than using feeds in Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. Instead, we've written our own parser that will parse this feed and pull in the information. And part of that was because, you know, we did use a handful of modules in Drupal 7 in order to get all of the pieces working we needed with feeds and not all of those modules were ready for Drupal 8 and 9. And our developer thought that it would be much more affordable to write our own feeds importer for our very specific use case of pulling in information from this feed that we've created than it would be to try and import all of the modules that we're currently using for Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. All right, I'm going back to check on the import. Um, it is, uh, let's see, about a third of the way done. <laughs> So I'm not sure this will finish. <laughs> um, this is also running from my local computer, which is considerably slower than the server that we're using. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe I can do it on a, on a smaller site. That will be really fast. Let's see. Okay, so this, blame Zoom. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's good to blame something. Okay, so this is by far um, the shortest set of meetings is for this uh, Bay Area Regional Collaborative site. And so what I'm going to do is go to the import page, choose the, actually go to the import page, choose the meeting importer, import, oh, maybe, well, <laughs> no, I'm going to be doing both. Sorry, computer. Hey, that was really fast. Um, so the feed, the feed that we've made for this particular website is a separate feed than the one that we use for the main website. Uh, we were able to do all of the filtering for which, which meetings we want on which site in the feed generation piece. And so uh, it was able to go out and check that feed, realize that there's no new items and come back. Um, if we wanted to do something a little bit more exciting and delete all the meetings that are currently on the site, we could do that too. And then we can run the importer again. Looks like there are currently 20 meetings. It'll go back through and pull all the information back in. So we have had um, a couple of instances where meeting information didn't update on our site fast enough. And so some of our editors would log in and make the changes to our meetings. And so we just have to make sure that the editors know that the next time that that importer runs, it's going to override any changes they've made to that content. So most of the editors who work on meetings only work in Granicus and they don't work in Drupal. And so that makes it pretty easy to make sure all of the changes always go in upstream and get pulled back down to our site. Um, all right, so uh, we were in the importer. This is on the Bark site, and it pulled in 20 meetings for the Bay Area Regional Collaborative. Every one of these meetings has um, uh, a location, a conference room that it's assigned, an agenda, meeting minutes, and if it's happened already, it'll have, um, sorry, meeting minutes and a video recording. So this video recording will take you directly to uh, Granicus, where it has the meeting uh, you can watch the video all the way through, or if you want to, you can click um, directly on some particular part of the agenda and jump right to that part of the meeting. So it's a really great tool. Um, integration is tricky. So that's why I'm doing this talk. Does anyone else have any questions on how it was done or anything you want to see? If you don't have any questions, I'm going to show you code. <laughs> So I'm in trying to go forward to Drupal 8 slash 9, uh, the, the resistance on that was because feeds, much of feeds wasn't ready or isn't ready. Yeah, so feeds, the feeds module itself is ready. It was a lot of those little glue modules that we needed that weren't ready. So um, if we hadn't needed a bunch of customizations to make the feeds importer work with our particular feed, then it would have made more sense to just use the pieces that were there. But because we have all of these very specific things like bringing in files and making sure the headers are set correctly and all this other stuff, it got really complicated in terms of how many moving pieces there were. And if we were to write our own custom importer, we would only need to write things one way for one use case and it would be a lot easier. So um, it just ended up saving our developer time to do it that way. Was my, did you look at migration as an option? Um, like micro no. module? We didn't, and you know, there's pro I don't, I'm not super familiar with that, but uh, there is probably a way that you could hook a migrate module up to an existing feed. 
but I haven't tried it. <laughs> um, I think that the big thing was because we already had um, all of the uh, code for the mappings and the tampers and everything, it was pretty easy to just drop those into a custom module or would apply them exactly where, where it was needed. My, um, I wasn't actually the one writing code for the Drupal 8 and 9 stuff, so I don't know. I don't know. We use Migrate a lot for, for that kind of thing uh, on Drupal 8. It, it works out pretty nicely. That's great. All right, I'm going to show you some code. Cool. All right, let's see. Let's uh, look at this is the Drupal 7 feeds module. Um, it uh, contains I'm not sure, my font is probably too small. Um, but it contains a subfolder of example feeds. So this is uh, what my feed item might look like. Uh, and this is specifically so that I can do a bunch of tests. I'll try and pull out ones that I know are particularly problematic and put them in my example file. So if we make any changes, we can run the test and make sure that it works for everything that we thought we had working before. Um, and. Uh, in addition to the examples, we have the importers themselves. So this is just an export of what a feeds importer uh, will, would look like. So after I construct it in the user interface, uh, here, there's an export button. Hey, there my content's importing. Um, that's gonna take a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Load this page. Okay, uh, so you can go ahead and export uh, feeds importer and it'll just give you a chunk of PHP code. And so that was just dropped directly into um, a file that's then loaded on the MTC site. And this allows us to uh, version control configuration changes to that file. Uh, we also have a bunch of plugins. For the most part, all of the plugins for our feeds are um, uh, tampers. So they'll uh, take data in one format and translate it into another one. Um, and then there's a tampers folder in here and this holds a configuration export of the tamper. So in the tamper section, you add all of these mappings between, oh, just all of this importing is going to be making a bunch of messages. Um, uh, you can export all of the tampers for a specific feeds importer. Um, also in here are um, just some, this is just the code that loads the stuff from the subdirectories, just kind of organization code. Um, oh, I had a bunch of um, uh, integrations with the Granica system before it switched to its Baja system and some of the unique identifiers for the content had changed. So this is just some sort of legacy code to make the old stuff work with the new stuff. Um, but yeah, it was pretty easy to handle that all as part of the importer so that if I had to check and see if a meeting was updated, the ID had changed, I could just compare it and say, does this one, this old one match this new one rather than comparing the old numbers to old numbers for, no, I said that backwards, <laughs> just the mapping. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if there's anything else you guys specifically want to see, but. Thanks, Jen. I don't see any questions coming in through Slack. So at this point, we'll just kind of leave it open to the attendees and to you. If you guys want to um, either post additional questions or unmute yourselves and ask. If not, then I guess we can go ahead and end a few minutes early. Thanks for your time, Jen. Really appreciate it. Uh, every, I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording.